is Aaron Davis. They call Aaron Davis Superman. And he looked the part when he beat Mark Breland for the welterweight title. Big money and superstardom looked to be in the offing. But somebody put some kryptonite in his gloves against Melder Taylor. A broken hand in the second round hampered him during this title defense, and he would lose his crown. Since that time, he is 6-1, but as a junior middleweight. He's got wins like this one over Craig Cummings. Tonight, it's Tony Marshall, and Aaron knows one thing, Marshall will be pumped. Well, he got nothing to lose. He got a lot to gain in this fight. He ain't got nothing to lose. He's coming to fight. He's coming to go to war. I'm going to be right there, ready to go to war with him. Marshall. Tony Marshall is a 22-year-old who has already been through a full career of exciting bouts. Among his 22 bouts, you can hardly find a clinker. His non-stop offense and sometimes suspect defense combine to produce wild bouts. And there are few exceptions. This style has produced a record of 15, 3, and 4. And what remains after all the bouts have come and gone is the crowd-pleasing reputation that Marshall brings to every fight. And it's that style that has helped launch him into an important match with former champion Aaron Davis. And Tony knows where he wants that to lead. The world title is what I'm really looking for. And I'm trying to get there as soon as possible. And where that I can, really. Well, here's a look at Tony Marshall. You and I always kid Tony Marshall about being the flashiest dresser in professional boxing. And uh, this is this is kind of a Pagliacci getup, although I might have a designing flaw here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And the hat he had on was very funky. As we... Uh, Get off the Spangles and on to the AutoZone Keys to Victory. Yeah. Well, in keeping with the Final Four, which is this weekend, a basketball theme for Marshall. Got to do it up tempo. Got to keep things going. Handle the press. Davis is going to be all over him in this fight. No turnovers. For Davis, got to pull the full court press on. Get after him. Pressure Tony Marshall. Make him make him make a mistake. Box in one. That means box. But throw that right hand. That's the one. That was very clever. Thank you. Well, you helped. What's left then is to get on with it to do that. Here's Michael Buffer, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated presents the featured bout of the evening here on ESPN, brought to you in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Commissioner Larry Hazard, Senior Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Al Daniels, Chief Physician at Ringside, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending Physicians, Dr. Wayne Gibbons and Dr. Charles Wilson. The timekeeper is Lindsey Tucker. The scoring will be done on a 10-point must system, and the three judges assigned are Lynn Carter, Al DeVito, and Eugene Grant. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Bally's Park Place here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division. When the bell rings, the men in charge of the action, referee Benji Estevez. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with green and gold trim, weighing in at 156 pounds. From Albany, New York, he brings a professional record of 15 victories, four KOs, three defeats with four draws. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the solid red trunks, weighing in at 157 pounds from the Bronx in New York City. His record, 38 victories, 23 by KO, only two defeats. Introducing the former welterweight champion of the world, Superman, Aaron Davis. Okay, you've been giving your free bow instructions, obey my commands at all times, and protect yourself at all times. Touch up. Good luck to both of you. Aaron Davis, 
former champion, wants to be there again. And Tony Marshall, who, as we said earlier, is really in a no-lose situation in this fight. Very intriguing matchup. No question Tony Marshall stepping up in class, even after his win over Curtis Summit, which was a good one. He has not seen an Aaron Davis yet in his career. Aaron Davis told us this morning that he had started at 182 pounds and has come all the way down to 154. And I'll tell you, just looking at him, he does not have the look of a fighter who has had to drop weight quickly. He does not look soft in the least. Now, of course, that said, I always hearken back to what Muhammad Ali looked like when he fought Larry Holmes. That was astonishing, yeah, and that was a mirage. Good left hand by Davis. Well, Davis has a very good right, but then there it is. But the hook is there also for him. Tony Marshall knows that he must box, but not run in this fight. And his problem has always been he has exchanged a lot, gotten into a lot of wars. I don't know if he can do that with Davis, because I think Davis might hit harder than anybody he has yet faced. Though Aaron Davis is not a huge knockout puncher, it's not his stock in trade when he fights as a good fighter. Marshall was talking to us, and you heard him at the beginning of this program talk about the fact that he feels he's got to finish better. He is not quick to want to discuss some defensive liabilities that have cropped up from time to time. He's keeping his hands up a lot higher than we normally see. Davis really starting to get there with the jab. Davis absolutely uh, emphatic on uh, the fact that he thought he'd be Julio Cesar Vasquez to fight over in Europe that he had lost by one point. Yeah, he said he went in there feeling he hadn't knocked Vasquez out. But sure enough, he was right. It is not easy for the American fighter to get a decision in the championship fight. Although Vasquez is not originally from Europe, he does live there. Saw some combinations a moment ago from uh, Tony Marshall. He'll not want to abandon that. An interesting round in that Davis has done less, but possibly landed more. One thing that I would think Marshall is not going to want to do tonight, and that is to get into a brawl. He's done that in the past. When somebody's hit him, he basically has said, I'm going to hit you back. Probably not a good idea against Aaron Davis. End of round one. It's been an interesting first round. We'll be back. Well, Aaron Davis landed 20 jabs in the first round. Out of 38, he threw just like that one. Marshall landed only two of 20. So that was a big edge for Aaron Davis in that first round. And he, of course, is going to generate his power off his jab. Here the numbers in the first round and a big edge to Davis. And ironically, uh, both corners really had the same instruction. Both wanted their men. In Davis's case, they said continue throwing the jab. And in Marshall's case, they said you got to jab your way in. Right now, Tony Marshall is starting to get back into the kind of fight that is a all or nothing at all proposition. When he, when he does that, when he gets in there and he starts those, those rapid fire combinations and leaves his head unprotected, he gets whacked like that. He has to do it and get out. Aaron Davis has a good jab, has always had one. That's what it leads to, isn't it? Now be forewarned if you haven't seen Tony Marshall before, and many of our, our viewers have, he's a very resilient fighter and has been hurt often during these fights, but will almost always come back, even in a fight that he ends up having a draw or losing by a decision. There's a move by Aaron Davis we'll see more of. Jabbing to the stomach. That will set up a punch over the top, a right hand, and maybe come back with a left hook. A 
26 Aaron Davis is not at all too old to get right back into the picture for years to come. No, and you, oftentimes you can tell after a fighter has lost in a championship effort, you get the sense that they've almost mentally thrown in the towel. Not so with Aaron Davis. He's right back to business. Nice double left hand. Nice combination by Tony Marshall. He's had a very good round, Marshall. And Davis has been silent and not using the jab that he's now starting to get back to. We've seen lots of improvement in Marshall over the last three or four fights. No question about that. Marshall moving his punches around nicely. This is the prototype round they wanted in this fight. Be busy, don't get hit, don't look to knock him out. And I'm sure there is a thought too, let's take him into the later rounds. Let's see what he's really got. We'll be back. Here is Marshall working on the inside. And the reason you can get away with that is because you throw a three punch combination and keep Davis busy, he can't counter you. Marshall giving Davis some good side to side movement too. Right now circling left, but he's given him a lot of different looks. The reason Marshall had a better round there, one of them is he did land 9 of 28 jabs, which is better than he did before, setting up a lot of those punches that he landed. They wanted Davis in between rounds, urging him to go to the body more. Nice left hook by Davis. Davis had been off for seven months, and that's a long layoff for him. And he wants to be, uh, he wants to be pretty busy. Those trunks of Tony Marshall would start to mesmerize you after a while. That's assuming they don't fall down. They're slipping a bit. Something from the Tanya Harding collection. <laughs> I think I saw that on the home shopping network. Yeah. Yeah. Double left hooks by, by Tony Marshall, very effective so what far. a nice here. job with that left hand. He's circling to his left and then throwing the hook. He's keeping Aaron Davis busy enough. Davis is not, it almost looks like Aaron Davis is looking for one punch to knock him out. My experience with Tony Marshall is that's not particularly a good idea. The left hand, that actually rocks Davis. It isn't a good idea against Marshall because you may not get the one that will knock him, knock him out. People haven't been knocking him out, even though we point out Davis might hit a little harder than some of those people. If you let him, though, Tony Marshall will out-hustle you, as he did Curtis Summit in his last fight. And he did knock him down a couple times. goes into the corner, Marshall jumps on it. Now remember, Marshall said he was looking to finish a little bit better. That may be a little premature here. Well, then what they want is quality punches and not too many punches. That was a good right hand by Davis to throw Marshall into the ropes. And Davis, a veteran, thinking part of that may have been trying to make Marshall punch himself out. And then Davis went after him. Good body work by Marshall. Marshall is nothing if not fit. He always comes in very absolutely in impeccable physical shape. Well, he's a 22-year-old who thinks his best days are ahead of him. That's certainly true. And boy, he came in here tonight. You can tell whatever happens, he came in here to make the best of this opportunity. He's having another very good round here. Very good round for Tony Marshall. We'll take you to Davis's corner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Here is Tony Marshall working on the inside, doubling up with that left hook. He's been doing it all night and staying after Aaron Davis. We start the fourth round and Marshall comes out cranking the left hand, missed with it. Boy, 
that was a third round for Tony Marshall, wasn't it? I mean, 67% landed many of those body shots and uh, throwing 94. It's interesting to see what Davis has left. Now, you know, we point out again, he had to come down a lot of weight. That could have an effect on him. And, and really, after the first round, he has done very little. And he was candid about the fact that he didn't like having to come down and all that weight. It's not a norm for him. Seven months is way too long for him to be off. He acknowledged that, and much longer than he's accustomed to being off. You know what else is significant now is Tony Marshall is backing Aaron Davis up. Very good point. And how is he doing it? with the jab, which is the thing that Davis was using to dominate the first round. Just enough movement for Marshall also. Aaron Davis really needs to get back to landing that jab. That will set other things up. There's a right hand from Marshall. He throw too many right hands. I like the way Marshall's moving. He's going to his left a lot, and then it's every time Aaron Davis sort of catches on to that, he gives him another look. Just enough movement from Marshall. That's a good move by Davis to counter with that left hand. He just didn't get there with it. Nice right hand. Brought it behind the jab and another right hand. This time Aaron Davis is definitely hurt. Good idea to go to the body by Marshall, and he is not wasting punches. He's doing what he said. Uppercut by Davis, and now he turns it around. Well, that's what we've also seen from Tony Marshall. This is the quintessential Marshall fight. It's not exactly what they wanted. Let's see if Aaron Davis can hurt it. Well, we knew there would be fireworks here, and there have been. That would be a good idea for Marshall to get off the ropes here. Excellent defensive work, though, by him. I think he's trying to throw one too many uppercuts against Davis, though, and he's getting, he's getting caught with that. I'll tell you what, though, this is a more confident Marshall, even now in these exchanges. You know what's going to be a distraction for him are those trunks. Yes, absolutely. They're falling down, and he doesn't need that kind of distraction. Well, the other thing I suspect, we're kidding about those trunks, but I, I have to think those are heavy. And over the course of time, they can really start to be a hindrance. Well, they're falling off right now. And that, that's not a facetious comment. It's becoming a real distraction to Tony Marshall. If I was them, I would find a way to tape those trunks and do something with them. Tuck them in or whatever. You can't let him stay on the I'm going to start off by telling you, you don't pull away from this illusion. Stand up. Look at it. Slip inside. Here, here. Here is Tony Marshall landing a right hand after an, a left uppercut. It was an odd combination. It worked. It stunned Aaron Davis, and he was able, he was able to go after him. And here's where Marshall ended up getting in trouble against the ropes, even though he still ended up slipping him. This time, Davis starts out the round by jumping on Marshall. And in that round, Marshall landed 65% of his power shots. So that's, that's extraordinary. Numbers through four rounds, now a decided edge for Marshall. Remember the first round was a big edge for Davis. And you know, we forget sometimes with Tony Marshall. He's 22 years old. We've seen him so much already. You know, he's had 20 plus pro fights that we forget he's young. And, and he's shown such improvement in the last three fights. Your card now, two-point edge for Marshall. Guy yeah, Davis winning the first round, that last three going to uh, Tony Marshall. You know what else Marshall's doing now? In this fight, and he did it in the Summit fight, they said it, they wanted quality in those punches. He's setting down on all the punches he's throwing down, not like when we used to see him, they'd be, you know, 90 punches around, but only 50 of them were quality punches. That's a very good point. There's a good 
good left hand by Davis. And they did take his trunk to good corner work. They're really, uh, that's a, an excellent idea. Combination from Davis a moment ago, too. Well, Aaron Davis does look sluggish in this fight. Maybe it was the weight coming down. Maybe it was the layoff. Could have taken Tony Marshall a little bit lightly. Whatever the reason, this is not the Aaron Davis we would normally expect to see, the guy that lost the championship fight by one point seven months ago. He's doing a little bit better in this round, however. Good body work by Marshall. And it's very, I think, intelligent on his part to keep going to the body. Nice uppercut the right hand behind it by Davis. Davis is starting to get the counter left hook in. There it is. Big right hand for it. Then the left hook. Starting to find a place for those counter punches. Tony Marshall is getting a little careless. The left hand by Davis. You can see the power of Davis. Subtle change here, even though I think Marshall's still winning this round. He's starting to stand there after he punches instead of taking that one step away. That's why Davis is landing some counter shots. Davis still trying to load up, but he did it pretty well in that round. Round number six, been a very entertaining fight so far. Davis and Marshall. Marshall in the spangled trunks, and Davis in the traditional red trunks. It's been a very good fight, and interesting on all, a number of levels. There's been action, some interesting strategic moves that have worked and not worked for fighters. Boy, you know Davis wants that left hook badly now. That's the punch that he feels is his in this fight. He got it at the beginning of this round. I think that the punch, the left that he threw at the beginning of this round got Marshall's attention. And I know they would want him to do what Marshall did earlier in this fight, and that is double up with the left hook, go to the body and the head with it. His right hand by Davis. Davis is getting there with much more frequency. Right hand from Marshall. Can't throw that left uppercut from outside the way Marshall is doing. Not the way Davis is countering with the left hook. He will nail him with that shot. If he throws, if Marshall throws the uppercut from outside again. See, there's the move again. Marshall keeps doing that. Davis doing a much better defensive job. There's that counter left hook I talked about. And Davis now in this round is starting to reestablish his gap. An interesting fight. It's had a lot of ebb and flow. And you wonder, Aaron Davis has primarily been backing up, throwing fewer punches than Tony Marshall. Can you win about that way? Even if you do counter punch in fact, I think in the eyes of the judges you can. I think that's historically what has been Marshall's problem in the eyes of the judges. I mean, when you have four draws, you're not convincing the judges. That's true. But then this is a different version of Tony Marshall in the last three fights. <laughs> This has not been a bad round for David, but Marshall's been so much busier. See, but I, I truly believe the judges will see what Davis does and not what Marshall does. In this instance, it's possible. He said to show your punches, but here goes Marshall now. Coming to the end of round six, it has been an action fight. We'll be back. This is one of the things Aaron Davis is doing to, to help himself. There's a double jab, even though he's backing away with those punches. He established that punch much better in the last round. 
Wow. Big edge for, for Tony Marshall. I actually ended up giving that round to uh, to uh, Davis. But I knew that there might be an edge for Marshall in total number of punches. Now Marshall's starting to dictate things again. And Davis saying, come on. What Marshall's doing, he didn't do in the last couple of rounds, is start to move to his left again. You have Marshall by two points. And the way he's fighting in this round, he's going to make it three points pretty soon, unless he gets whacked by Davis. Much better defense by Tony Marshall. I mean infinitely better. And the difference is, he hits, he gets out. And that's what they talked about him doing. If he fights this way the rest of his career, even this style, I assure you that he will be a much better fighter. And the days of Tony Marshall fighting journeymen are over. Well, should he go on to get a win here, which is still very questionable, of course, this would be a quantum leap forward. For well, him. it would. And, and my point is, even if he just stays with that style, no matter what, he's shown the ability here against the world-class fighter to get the job done. You know, right there is where they need him to, to get out of there, and he does it. It's all a rhythm that you create in boxing. The rhythm he had before allowed people to land punches on him. This rhythm makes it harder. Now, right now, he's standing there a little bit too long with Davis. That's where I hit the left hook. He needed to get out of there quicker. There's movement. He didn't stay in there with him. It's just a little movement will help Marshall get away from those punches. Davis is pushing his punches a little more in this round than he has. Well, they couldn't have written this one up better on the blackboard for Tony Marshall. This round has been perfect. Davis starting to puff a little bit. Good left hand there, however. But Marshall fights off the rook. Excellent move. That's going to take a lot out of Aaron Davis. He hit him with his best Sunday punch and another one, and Tony Marshall doesn't move. Interesting round and a good one for Marshall despite a couple of good shots by Dave. All right, you gotta stay busy. Stay off the ropes, baby. Right, you get the rope, stay grab them and spin your way out. Stay out the center. All right. And continue what continue. Take a deep one. Give me a deep one. Chris. Continue coming in with the short jab, dropping the hook to the body and the right hook to the head. But you gotta be aggressive. You've got to stay on top of them. Stay off the boat. Don't don't give him Tony, 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 look at this. He's looping all his punches now. He's desperate. He runs behind. Tony, what you gotta right do is now, don't let him win it by looping punches. Doing, what you're doing is fast hands, Take pushing deep. your way Take out of it. Well, with the exception of too many voices in that corner, the advice is good. Here's uh, Aaron Davis landing some a left hand, but it, it's Marshall fighting his way off the ropes. And they don't want him on those ropes. So we start the eighth round. We're going 10. Aaron Davis coming off a championship loss. Former champion of the welterweight division, having knocked out Mark Breland, now stalking Tony Marshall. In Marshall's corner, they wanted to stay right on top of Aaron Davis. Well, you think Aaron Davis, who is a warrior, doesn't want it. He's come out in this round thinking, you know what? I am in danger of an upset here. I've got to make something happen. Good thinking. Yeah. Through seven rounds, you can see what danger he's in. Big edge so far for, for Tony Marshall. That, that's, that's the quintessential Tony Marshall of the last couple of fights. Throw four, five, six, seven body shots, get out, do it again, move to your left. That's the classic definition of boxer punch. Yeah, he's really fighting an excellent tactical fight. And they told him, spin him and get out of there. That's what he did. Remember what we saw 
Tony Marshall in those early fights, didn't you have the feeling that for him to be a world-class fighter was going to be a stretch because of all those punches he took? Yes, absolutely. And he's showing us tonight it might not be. I mean, he was a warrior, but warriors sometimes can hurt you as much as help you. And he wasn't a big puncher. Good combination by Davis and another left hand. Davis is using the double left hook very effectively, and Marshall cannot afford to lay on those ropes. They don't want him right there. Davis loves him on those ropes. You know, it's interesting, Aaron Davis hasn't had a bad round in this round, no. but Marshall has also had an excellent round and has landed a lot of punches. Aaron Davis is sluggish tonight. I'm sure he would be the first one to agree with that afterwards. Since he's not as quick and as sharp as he'd like to be. As you mentioned some of the factors. He had to come down about 40 pounds, 30-some pounds, let's say. Had a seven-month layoff. Good right hand again by Davis. I'll tell you what, though. Tony Marshall's not being moved by those punches. Let, let's make another point. Davis has stepped up to the junior middleweight division. He's fought for the title of two, but he really came up as a welterweight. That's a good point. We come to the end of the eighth round. Better round for Davis, but did he win it? Davis had his moments when Marshall languished on the ropes like that right hand. This the ninth round. Well, is this an impressive offensive performance by both men? I think so. Both fighters are over 53% landed in their power punches. That is good. Davis did have the edge in the last round, even though Marshall was much busier. And did you hear Davis say in his corner that the, what, his legs are gone? Yeah, that's what I, I'm certain that I heard him say to his trainer. And his trainer said, well, your arms are all right, aren't they? <laughs> Two-point fight, that's what I have also. Good right hand by Davis. Good body work by Marshall. And my question is, will all that body work pay off in terms of the judges? Will it pay dividends for him? Part of what has uh, slowed down Davis. Marshall has slowed a bit, in my judgment. Not quite as much hand speed, not quite as much movement. He's taking some serious shots from there. Aaron Davis not having a bad ninth round here. And this is one of those fights that even though Tony Marshall may end up with a huge edge in terms of number of punches landed, there may be enough rounds in there where Davis landed more punches to make this a pretty close fight. Now wide punches from, Dave, from Marshall. That's a difference. His punches are coming much wider now. See, look at that, and that's why he's missing. Well, and what he's doing, too, is where before he was circling to his left, now he's really just following Davis. And staying much more in front of him. This is a close round. Davis did well early, but Marshall has been much more active. Pressure legs belong to Tony Marshall. There's no question about that. He could steal this round with this, even though everything's not landing. That's not where they want Marshall, though. Going to take into Davis's corner. One round left. Made him look good in this last round, man. You made him look bad. You made him look good, damn it. Come on. Let's look good in this next one. This is it. 
This is the one you gotta leave the game for. This is sick. Go to work. Fast hands. Just keep letting them go. They keep letting them go. Nice work for you, but that's all he was. Strong round. Let's finish this round real strong. Finish it strong. This is it. Watch this. This is it. Let's go. Catch me. Another guy. Huh? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You want to touch it? You want to Come hey, on. let your hands go. He's set for that right uppercut, too, if you get a chance. Come on. Let your hands go. Around. You can hit him with it. Let it go. That's what I'm saying, man. Huh? Yeah. Let yeah. your hands go. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Let your hands That's go. That's the whole thing, man. Eh? Mm -hmm. Well, Aaron Davis has certainly not thrown as many punches as they would like. That man has thrown lots of punches. Has he landed enough more than Aaron Davis to win this decision? We'll see. Yeah, that last round was really a pivotal round. Now, I gave that to Davis, you gave it to Marshall. And it was a very close round, so, and that was a pivotal round. Here are the numbers through nine rounds. Decided edge for Marshall, but as you pointed out earlier, it depends on when those punches were thrown. He had a couple rounds where he had a huge edge. Davis has had a lot, a number of rounds where he may have won it by a little bit, so. And that's really why it ends up being a closer fight than uh, that those numbers would indicate. There's two things that have definitely been decided here. Number one, it's been decided in my mind that Tony Marshall can be a world-class fighter, might be one right now, and he's approved 100% in the last three or four fights. The other thing that's proven is a guy like Aaron Davis can't lay off for seven months and lose 30 pounds and expect to be as sharp as he wants, but then he knew that. Now you have the three-point fight. I have it a one-point fight, and if Davis on my card should win this round, you'd be looking at the dreaded draw again. And that last round was pivotal because I would have ended up having a one-point fight if that if I'd given Davis that last round, which I was tempted to do. And both fighters are tired. Yeah, the technique now of both men has waned. There's a good move by Marshall getting off the ropes. Aaron Davis really wants him on the ropes. Marshall is, is equally as tired right now as Aaron Davis. He's pushing his punches. As is Davis. Davis is really tired. Davis just laying on Marshall. And interestingly, it looked a little better than it ended up being because he slapped him that much. Davis took a lot of holding on the inside. Yeah, I just think he has nothing left. Again, a close round. I think that Marshall has probably landed more punches. Have, has Davis landed the showier punch? That's wow. the question. Yeah, my feeling with 30 seconds left is that Marshall has done enough to win this round. And neither man has had their best round. And they don't want Marshall on those ropes. He's not doing himself any favors being there. Good left hand by Davis with 13 seconds left. Over. And I believe Marshall did enough in the 10th round to win the fight. They certainly think so. Sam Bunch lifting him up. If in fact this ends up being an upset and that man Aaron Davis doesn't win, I'm not it will not be a huge upset, but it will be a significant upset. Oh, I would think so. Certainly would make this man take a pretty good size step backwards. The, the road to a title will be a lot longer should he lose this fight. And Tony Marshall. Work too hard, David. Work too hard. And Aaron Davis. Take a look at the total numbers in this fight. Number one, baby. Pretty Number good one. edge for Tony Marshall. Will that equate to a victory? Whatever, I'm telling you, Tony Marshall proved that he is a fighter who can step into the big leagues. And for Aaron Davis, as you look at him, a lot of concern because a loss here could make it very difficult for him to get back to a junior middleweight title, at least in the near future. It wasn't a terrible performance by him. It, he was just a little off because of the layoff and the weight loss and all the rest. Well, let's find out. To tell us, here's Michael Buffer. 
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, another great fight here at Bally's Park Place. A round of applause for these two junior middleweights. We go to the scorecards. Lynn Carter and Eugene Grant both scored about 96 to 94. Al DeVito has it 97 to 93 for the winner by unanimous decision. Tony Marshall. Tony Marshall wins the unanimous decision and takes a big step forward. A much improved fighter and a fine performance here by Tony Marshall, originally from Georgetown, Guyana. We've seen him many times. You've not seen him as impressive as he was tonight in a unanimous decision victory over the former WBA waterway champion, Aaron Davis. We'll be back. Here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, we go now to the center of the ring where Al Davis is with Aaron Davis. Thank Al you, Davis. Barry. Did I say Al Davis? Well, he, he isn't he the guy He's with the Los Angeles Raiders? Pride and poison. You got that, there too. There you go. Thanks. Um, Aaron, thank you, by the way, for having the class to come over here. I know this is a disappointing loss to you. First, I guess I have to ask you, did you feel like you could have gotten that decision? Yeah, I feel like I won the six hit. Mm -hmm. He was hitting me mostly on the arms. I was hitting him with, with shots to the head. I feel like I won the fight. He, was there, though, it, it seemed like maybe the layoff and the weight loss made you a little less sharp than, than we would have expected. I wouldn't blame it on layoff. I'm not making no excuses for the fight. I mean, the way I look, that's the way I look. But I still, I think I want to fight. Okay. And you, you, did you think it was, what, in terms of how you would critique your performance and sharpness, what would you say? I'll just go right back to the gym and just get back in. I haven't fought in eight months. Get back in. Do the best I can do. Okay. Well, congratulations on a good effort anyway. All right. That was Aaron Davis, who feels he won it. Let's get Tony Marshall over here, uh, who obviously will feel that this was the correct decision. Tony, come on over here. This is Tony Marshall, who just won what for you must be a huge victory. This was a fight in which you stepped way up in class and beat a former champion. I'd like to say thank. First, I'd like to say thank to my clothes designer, Tashik, and to my barber, <laughs> you. you know, and to all the fellas in Alabama on Swan Street. Ross, I'm coming home with it, babe. Okay, well, hey, you got all the thank yous in there. You performed, I would think, just as, as the game plan outlined. You stayed in only long enough to land your punches, then you got out. That was the plan. The, fact, the coaches told me that he's winging, he's desperate, so what I got to do is get in there and get up. I don't really think about it. Just go in there and do what you have to do. There's a replay. You see you doing exactly what we're talking about. Did he ever hurt you during this fight? No, definitely not. Not even one round in the fight. My corner asked me that. I said, what, are you kidding? Did I look like I was even shook? No. Well, I, not to take none from the guy. He's strong and, you know, he what? got his props and everything because he can fight. What does this tell you about yourself? This was significant tonight. <laughs> Let's tell me I'm ready for anybody. I'm ready. So you feel at this point uh, possibly even a junior middleweight champion or cont another contender? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's what we've been working yeah. on. We're just looking forward Miller, what do you think? What do you think? We have, a, we have a little bit of a promise of maybe Vasquez for the world title. If we beat Aaron Davis, and that's what we want. Okay, Vasquez. so you'd like who, the man who just we beat Aaron Davis David. by a point. Right, we want him because it, that's only right. He just beat Aaron Davis. And then oh, Vasquez right. beat Aaron Davis. Natural fight right here. Okay, at 22. Shout out to all the fighters in St. Joseph and Swan. All right, at 22, yeah. things look good in the future, don't they? Definitely. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Ought to be 22, have a win over a former champion, and have it all in front of you. That's what Tony Marshall has. Excellent performance by him tonight, <laughs> by any standards. We'll be back. In New Jersey, our main event for a world title match. I guess he is against Vasquez because Vasquez just beat Aaron Davis by only one point. That was my next question. Is he ready for one? And you've already answered it, but what does he have to go over to Europe to make that fight? And that would be very difficult, of course. It would be very difficult, and he may feel that at 22, and his people may feel, even if they went over there and lost the close decision, it would still keep him in a very good position, and maybe it's worth the try to go over and win it. I never, ever thought I'd be saying at this point that Tony Marshall is ready to fight for a world title, but his improvement in the last three or four fights is so spectacular that I can say that with more than a straight face. What about Aaron Davis now? He, as he said, he's going to go right back to the gym. Yep. The road's just a little bit longer for him. Yeah, I think that Aaron Davis, uh, when he sits back and really reflects on this, will admit to himself that the layoff, the, uh, the weight he had to lose made him less than sharp. I don't think he wanted to admit that right afterwards because he wanted to still make the case that he won the fight. Aaron Davis is not a shot fighter. He is not a guy that still doesn't have skills. He's just a guy that was slightly off tonight and faced a guy in Tony Marshall who was not only hungry, but 
took a big step up in terms of the way he performed. It was just bad timing for Aaron Davis. Let me say this about Tony Marshall. He's a guy who somebody like the champion Vasquez or any other champion at that weight division is going to look at and say, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I'll take a chance at this guy. He's inexperienced. He doesn't knock people out. I have an idea Tony Marshall might get a fight, and he might get it sooner rather than later. Well, the, the scenario you just described is exactly what went on in the thinking of Aaron Davis and his camp. They said, we'll take a shot at him as a return fight, get on ESPN, which they'd never been on for some continued exposure, but it turned out not to be the right decision because Tony Marshall did step up as he very well might in a championship match. And tactically a very good fight for Tony Marshall too. A little bit of that credit's got to go to his corner. That's the part I love the most about this. The fact that they were willing to get a game plan and he stuck to it. All right. Well, that's a wrap for us from here at Atlantic City. For my partner, Al Bernstein, I'm Barry Tompkins. We'll see you one week from tonight in Tunica, Mississippi.